go back. I'm gesturing to the rule that was broken, in case you're wondering what, the, what that was. Um, so listening for the intent to understand. And I might have to do it six or seven times during the class period. Um, Alejandra es una... I like the exercise. <laughs> you know. And then, like Tina says, you just take, you don't get frustrated. Um, you know, you just think in your head, wow, what a great opportunity to just, you know, exert, you know, what the expectations are in this class. So I'm so glad the students did this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I'm stealing that directly from what she says in her videos. Um, and then, that's it. You know, and the students will shush each other and then, and then you're back on again. Because they're getting frustrated with you constantly having to do that or something. And then you have to monitor each other too. And that's part of the interpersonal grade, interpersonal communication grade. That's the second component to keep the classroom managed in the target language because 50% of their grade is based on them staying engaged in the language for the whole class period. So when you combine that with the rules, you've got some excellent classroom management going on. My case, I mean different schools and different communities and all that stuff. I mean, you know, that's basically it. Um, John Cowart, I think is his name, he, uh, he's got a high needs environment and it's, it works very well for him too. Um, I think that's his full name, but you can check that out. Um, I can give that information. So, so there you go. So part of the interpersonal grade, if you're an A student, you, uh, you never need any reminders and you're also an advocate to tell other people to stop and to you know, stay focused in the language. B, you know, a B student, or you're an 85 percent student, then that means you need a you need a, a little um, reminder to get back in the game, or or he's stopping because I, you know, because you know, teacher stops because I had something to do with it, or something once or twice. It, it's all laid out. C student, I needed a personal reminder, one on one, um, and things like that. And the enterprise, I'm not, I can't talk about a lot of this stuff. I want to really show you a whole bunch of activities. But it's kind of important to have that stuff set up so that your activities and keeping things in the language is successful um, and, and, and at high levels of engagement with little to no uh, native lang English language going on in the classroom. And, um, and it's always fluctuating. It's like an interpersonal task grade in, in my grade book, and it's always there. It's 100, and, I'm, and I got a rubric for it. And some students have 80, 85, 75s, and it's ever fluctuating, you know, so they see it at all times for the semester. And, I, and I, I adjust every Friday you know, after I make little notes about you know, who had the cell phone out, who said you know, way too much English that was not necessary and things like that. Okay, so um, activities using CI, uh, TPRS, total physical risk, uh, total, <laughs> total um, teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling, uh, having student improv stories, uh, movie talks, um, basically you take three minute clips and you uh, uh, screenshot them and talk through a video and then eventually you show the video as a bonus after you're done circling like a, um, a movie talk. A lot of people will use a movie talk that doesn't really deal with their curriculum just to you know break the monotony of what they've been teaching all the time. And then some others are looking for a video that deals with, um, you know, okay, I'm, ta I'm teaching the house chores unit and I see like I found a video that has to do with, you know, somebody has to clean the house and things like that. So, you know, I can use it to, um, enhance my vocab thematic unit. Um, picture talk, uh, that, that just, you know, scenario pictures on the board. What is she doing? Oh, she's riding a bike. Okay, uh, what, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? It's sunny. And then we click to the next picture. Um, or uh, you can do picture talk a lot of different ways. If you're doing it just to like um, keeping the language in, in, in having them trying to acquire the set, list of vocab words. Um, PQA is personal questions and answers. You're asking them personal questions um, oh, you ride a bike? Oh, uh, how often do you ride the bike? And, oh, always? He always rides a bike. And sometimes I embed this kind of stuff during my story. I'll be telling a story on the screen, then I stop for a minute and ask some personal questions to get them more emotionally invested in the story. They're just not listening to, you know, a 10 sentence story that I keep saying over and over again and circling that. You know, I go around to them a little bit, I'm like, okay, back to the story. So. Um, and then reader novels, Pobreana, Brandon Brown Wants a Dog, Pumba, Esperanza, everything from Fluency Matters and TPRS books. I also do whole class readings right now, Spanish one, we're reading uh, Brandon Brown Wants a Dog, and I'm reading it out loud and asking questions, and I'm trying to incorporate reader's theater, which um, I'm kind of tapping into that a little bit. 
um, learning how to do that. And uh, not yet with the ones, but the twos, I already got them doing free voluntary reading where they grab a novel and they read for five minutes on Tuesday and Thursdays in silence over a book of their choice. Um, but yeah, a lot of that other stuff is kind of like what I've been doing in class. Okay, so activity. Um, uh, persona especial, special person, or maybe invitado especial. Um, all right, so at the, beginning of, at the beginning of the year, I'm doing calendar talk and weather talk as my opener. Um, then I start wanting to get the special pers go person going. So all the students are handed this, and you've got the English questions. What is your name? How old are you? When is your birthday? Where do you live? Where are you from originally? Do you have a pet? What do you like to do? What type of music do you like? What is your favorite social media? Do you play a sport? Where would you like to visit someday? And what class do you like? And how many siblings do you have? It's a nice snapshot to start getting, you know, that's basically all they're about are these questions. Right, um, and start putting this in rather than let's just talk about the time and the what you know the time and you know the alphabet and things like that. So um, I have them fill this out, and uh, so they just put their name. They don't have to write complete sentences. They just put you know John 14, May 5th, you know, all the way through. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. That's just to translate the sentence. They're writing down here. Sorry, they're writing in third column only. Um, so they put me llamo, my name. It's very structured, kind of. Tengo 14 años. I have them spell the number because tengo 14. You know, people can say that all the time when they see the actual number, right? Um, same thing, you know, with the date or their, their, um, their birthday. I live in, vivo in somewhere, um, Livonia. I'm from Dearborn originally. Um, yeah, I have a, you know, dog, cat, things like that. I'm giving them words up on the board to set this up so they can get the information down. Okay, so I put better on, you know, okay, who else? We're, we're getting, we're putting this all together in English, right? Um, I'm, a, I'm allotting for that time. I like to, whatever, I like to ski. On the back is a whole list of all the verbs that comes up eventually, right? Um, the, the verb unit. Um, and so they go ahead and take one. It's all defined on the back of the sheet too. So, dibujar, to draw. Oh, I like dibujar, and then dibujar, you know, <laughs> that um, because, you know, they haven't had input on any of these words yet. Um, and then, what type of music do you like? Rap. Most people say rap. Um, what is your favorite social media? A Snapchat or Instagram? And, yes, I play basketball, or no, I don't play any sport. No, juego ningún deporte. I get better a lot this year. Uh, where would you like to travel some, you know, visit someday? I could use travel, but, you know, let's throw a cognate in there, because I'm trying to, you know, I don't want to, like, overload them with all this the Spanish, um, the sports is easy, right? And the, you know the, the music, you know, because what we're doing is we're fo I'm, they're focusing on listening to these questions and the input the whole time, you know, and and they are producing because they feel valued in class and everyone's paying attention to the person and it's setting up the expectations of keeping things in the language, but we're really focusing on me providing the input of these questions, okay? Um, so I like to would like to visit France. I like science. Once again, they got all the information to put in this, all, 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 the, all the stuff they need in English so they can put the words in Spanish. If you have a sibling. The third person is just for them just to have there because, you know, when I'm interviewing the person, I stop and I ask things in third person and then I go back and talk to the student again. Um, I didn't do this this year. Last year I did where, you know, I had students, you know, there's like three on one side, three on the other. So when I have somebody up there I'm interviewing, everybody needs something to do, you know and fill out as I'm interviewing, and then they could submit it, you know, after six people. But I don't, not, not anymore. Not once I got the whole stopping and going to the rules. <laughs> you know, I just keep doing that. So they, they're fine. They don't need to be doing anything except being engaged in the language, and then I'm putting through that interpersonal break and, the, you know, the expectations of stopping and walking. So it, it's good. Um, I, should have, I wish I knew, knew about it last year. Um, examples of students writing a paragraph, okay, um, and we'll get to that later. Um, so here's like a little simple mini story. I would say something like, it doesn't go anywhere, but I, I start this week one, like four days into Spanish one, and we can go back to the special person again as well. Um, there's a girl, her name is uh, Natalia, she's 14 years old. Class, is her name Olivia? And they say no. And they say, is her name Natalia? Yes. Class, is she 14 or is she 15? They say 14 or whatever I just said. Natalie is in the park one day and um, 
she has a dog, and her dog's name is uh, Felix, or so, Oscar, Oscar. And uh, so then I stop, class, what is her name? You know, so I can kind of go back because, and then start getting them to produce like the interrogative question, right? Because they're seeing a pattern as I'm telling things, so they kind of know what I'm asking them in a way. <clears throat> what is her name? Natalie. How old is she? 14. Class, does she have a dog? Back to yes or you know, yes or no, either or. And it's whatever I feel. I don't really have a set plan of what I'm going to say. It's just I'm going with the flow with their responses. Oh, they don't, I didn't get a lot of responses from that interrogative question, so I better say a yes or no question again, or an either or. Okay, before I proceed. She has a dog named Oscar, and he's 13 years old. And oh, I also say she likes dogs, you know, and that she has a dog. I'm already putting in the high frequency structures, besides her name, but you know, how old is she? Does she have, she has a dog. Um, she está en el parque, she's in the park. Um, she le gustan los perros, so got le gusta going. And then Oscar uh, um, likes tennis balls or something. And then, and then I said something like, you know, uh, and then she, and he doesn't like, uh, uh, cats or something, and then you know, then he goes up. <laughs> so, and that's it. It's just like a little mini, mini story that goes nowhere. But the fact, but I'm I'm focusing on these high frequency structures of has and likes and is and is. That's another one too. I say, es una muchacha, está en el parque, and we're not going to talk about. There's a lot of like you know order of acquisition of you know how many times they get Sarah in a star forever and ever, but yet after three, four years, they're still some, saying something like, um, ella es en, la, en el parque. There's a natural reason why that's happening in the head. Um, Sarah becomes a lot more often than a, a star is late acquired. <clears throat> even if you're saying, you know, even through your whole level one class and you've said time and time again, está contenta, está en el parque. You'll still get es contento es no parque. Um, and then another one, this will be like the next day, so kind of the same kind of thing. He's in his house, he's not in the park. And I might say, who was in the park from yesterday? And they say, oh, it was Natalia. And then you know, he didn't like the cat, and so same idea. I just switched the animal and the person, <laughs> you know, and the location, and to keep focusing on le gusta and tiene and es. Um, personalized questions I talked about, use of pictures while asking questions, use to prime students for your story. Um, you know, I might do that first a little bit, talk about dogs and what sport you like to play a little bit before we do the story. Because my stories will actually get very involving. I'm sorry. Did you? Um, so, you know, to build more reps of the input. Now, yeah, um, the best way, obviously, is to start watching YouTube videos and maybe watch some of my videos and Tina's videos so you can see it actually being in place because it's hard for me to kind of convey everything because I'm not actually doing the lesson in class, you know, I'm just explaining this. Um, but uh, I have a lot of examples on YouTube. Um, TPRS, structure words uh, written on the board, whatever words you want to do for your story are up here. Define them if you need to, if you didn't have enough input on it or you had to write a story that doesn't have the word you need but you want to throw it in to make the story flow. Have the students react to what you say. Ah, ooh, ah. Use a gesture to signal their response if you want to. Um, whenever I say there's a problem, I own problema, they all say, I know. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and at the end, my stories usually end, end on a sour note, so they all say, oh. Um, but sometimes in storytelling, it's a, it's a problem. Um, I have a problem in the story, and then it gets resolved, but then it ends with another problem. And a lot of times with story writing, it's a problem, but at the end, a lot of times, it's a happy ending all the time. It's resolved. But, I don't know, sometimes I just like to, you know, have something that's just unfortunate, I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then, so yeah, so I, this is another story we did, but I'm not going to go through all that. But this is where it gets, you know, a lot more involving um, down the road um, and all this stuff. Okay. Um, and then what I end up doing is having students retell the story. So here's a sample from one of my students, um, Spanish one in December. And uh, I just say, okay, get out a piece of paper and write out the Spanish as much as you can, everything that you could remember. Um, so if you don't speak Spanish, and then I had them circle and do word count. Uh, there's a girl named Natalia. She's 15 years old. She has a sister named something. Uh, Mia. Uh, Mia has, has seven. That's this is from this. 
Um, she lives in a house in Tecumseh, Michigan. Her parents um, leave the house at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, and the father, Ignacio, all right, he works in a, as a cook. And the mother's Lorena. She works in a, a children's hospital in Detroit. Um, uh, every Sunday at 9 o'clock in the morning, the family goes to church to, to practice religion. I didn't say that, but she just put that in there. Um, and, you know, she added that. Natalie likes to practice religion. Uh, Natalie likes um, uh, horror movies and, not, and horror novels. Her favorite class is English. She always has an A in class. Uh, someday Natalie wants to be a English teacher. This summer the family goes, is going to Phoenix to visit her grandparents, and she likes to visit because they like to swim, and her grandparents have a pool. Okay, so um, that was after me telling this for probably 15, 20 minutes, and then they just know dictionary. You know, I erased the word. Why? Well, I kept maybe a word or two on the board, like children's hospital. That's not in my unit. Um, and then 